Whether it was a western, film noir, or just a straight drama, he always delivered a solid, dependable performance. Handsome and well-built, he excelled at playing ordinary men caught in extraordinary and often threatening situations. A longtime audience favorite, he was the most popular male star of the mid-1950s. He is the one and only Glenn Ford. Ford was born Gwilin Samuel Newton on May 1, 1916. He was raised in Quebec, Canada, where he developed his lifelong love of the outdoors. Taking his stage name from the Canadian town of Glen Ford, Ford acted on Broadway before entering films in 1939. Making a name for himself, he appeared in a variety of movies throughout the early 40s. One such film was the 1941 western, Texas. Starring with Ford was William Holden, a peer who became one of the actor's longtime friends. In 1943, Ford married actress Eleanor Powell, a union that would last until 1959. Ford teamed with lovely Rita Hayworth for the first time in the 1946 film, Gilded. This impressive film noir made stars of both actors, whose on-screen chemistry appealed to audiences. What did you say to him? I just told him if a man answers, hang up. Didn't you hear about me, Gabe? If I'd been a ranch, they would have named me the bar nothing. Love me forever. I hate you too, Johnny. I hate you so much that I think I'm going to die from it. And let forever begin to know. Put the blame on Maine, boy. Put the blame on Maine. One night she started to shim and shake. That brought on the Frisco quake. Make her stop. What do you mean by it? Now they all know what I am. And that should make you happy, Johnny. It's no use just you knowing it, Johnny. Now they all know that the mighty Johnny Farrell got taken and that he married a... Warner Brothers was so impressed by Ford's performance that they borrowed the actor from Columbia Studios to appear in A Stolen Life. This story of twins, one good, one evil, also starred Betty Davis and Dane Clark. I want another chance. Do you think you deserve one? Maybe not when I wanted to. That's the first honest thing you've said in months. In Mr. Soft Touch, Ford found himself opposite Evelyn Key. As a gambler on the run, he hides out in a settlement house and falls for the social worker played by Keyes. I'd like to get down. You ought to climb ladders more often. Don't talk that way to me. Something was wrong. I knew it from the beginning. Just because I carry a gun? Your trouble, it comes with your kind. What's the matter? You think I'm going to use it? No, when you're not using this place as a hideout. What's in it, Joe? That's the future, Jenny. That's the stone wall I built between me and the gutter. Be careful, Joe. I found you. I don't think I'd like losing you. What'd you say? I said... Joe! In Secret of Convict Lake, Ford leads a group of escaped prisoners to a small town populated only by women. Jean Tierney, Ethel Barrymore, and Zachary Scott co-starred in this offbeat western. Let me go. I'd forgotten how a woman felt to hold. I didn't know there was this much left inside of me from the hang. Not really a bad guy, Ford's attempt to keep the convicts from hassling the women only leads to violence. Work him over here to the start, but... Affair in Trinidad was not only inspired by Gilda, it re-teamed the film's two stars, Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford. 
It's only that I do what I love and love what I do. Can't help the mad desire that's deep inside of you. you it was Hayworth's return to the screen after a four-year absence. What is it between you and him? There's nothing between us. Is that why he looks at you the way he does, like he, like he can't wait to get his arms around you? I can't help how he looks at me, but his arms have never been around me. Chris. Though audiences were glad to see the two stars reunited, critics felt the quality of the film to be well beneath both actors' talents. Quite the opposite was the 1953 Fritz Lang film, The Big Heat. In this gritty noir classic, Glenn Ford is at his quintessential best. You came here to my home about a murder? Get rid of him. Let's go, mister. As an honest cop in a corrupt department, he attempts to bring down a powerful mob boss despite warnings from his superiors. When a car bomb meant for him instead kills his wife, Ford quits the force and works outside the law to avenge her death. You're under suspension. Well, you better check with Lagana first. He might not approve. I'll have your badge and gun, now. It's yours, permanent. I ask for your gun, too. It doesn't belong to the department, it's mine. I'm warning you officially, don't try to use it. Gloria Graham co-starred as the mall who helps the former cop in his quest for justice. Plunder of the Sun featured Ford in a different kind of quest. Publicity for the film had the actor himself explaining the plot. Do you know where we are? We're in a tomb, a tomb of treasure, buried by the dust of time, in the temple of an almost forgotten people who disappeared from the face of the earth. Shrouding in the mystery of a grotesque idol, the key to a fabulous treasure that throughout the years has driven men to violence, to greed, and murder. Here, where ghosts of the ages stalk to solitude, is where the ancient Zoltecs of Mexico fashioned their civilization in a golden glory that rivaled the splendor of imperial Rome. But what brought me here? Was it hunger for the great wealth? Lust for adventure? Was it Julie who was in love with love? Kiss me, mystery man. Was it Anna Luce who was trying to buy back her past? Have you never had a debt which was not legal, but which you felt you had to pay? Or was it Berrien, who was willing to die for the secret? Or Jefferson, who was ready to kill for it? Jefferson, those pieces you've got there, they're not going to do you any good. So you better have the master list. You see these numbers? Don't touch them! I've been under lock and key for so long, and now, and now at last I have a chance to do all the things I thought of. One million dollars, and you're throwing it right into the lap of the government. Turn around. Human Desire reunited Ford with director Fritz Lang and actress Gloria Graham for a dark tale of murder and infidelity. All night, every night I think of you. Then all day. I know it's wrong. I pray and pray for him to die. Don't say that. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Just think. A person can be alive in the morning and dead at night. Roderick Crawford also starred as the husband whose jealousy prompts him to kill. Oh, don't throw at me. I'm sick of it from all of you. Oh. What went on this afternoon? You had to tell me about the murder, didn't you? You had to tell me because you knew that once I knew about it, I'd be in it just as deep as you are. Oh, no, that's not true. Isn't it? Even as he held her in his arms, he could still see that man on the night train. The husband she drove to murder. The fight to a finish in the freight yard. The girl he had promised to marry. You 
Using Bill Haley's Rock Around the Clock over its title sequence, The Blackboard Jungle became the first film to use rock and roll in its soundtrack. It also gave Glenn Ford one of his best roles as a new teacher encountering juvenile delinquency and violence in his high school class. Sidney Poitier and Vic Morrow were two of the young actors portraying Ford's students. Although he tries everything he can to reach his charges, Ford is forced to use violence against violence when he catches a student assaulting a female member of the faculty. No matter what happens, I love you. I was silly and vain and selfish, so I doubted you. I was like one of the bad kids in your class. Somebody told me a lie, and I believed that lie. But one's as bad as the other. So I want to tell you something. I was wrong about something else, too. But you see, this is my classroom, and you're in it. And what I could teach you, first lesson is don't put in. Don't, because just flunk out for good. Interrupted Melody, the biography of opera star Marjorie Lawrence, offered the actor a change of pace. Appearing opposite Eleanor Parker, he played the doctor who helps the singer recover from polio and return to her craft. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh why can't I? The Violent Man returned Ford to the Western genre, where he starred with Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robinson, Diane Foster, and Brian Keith. Once again, the actor played a normal, peaceful man pushed into action by the violent forces around him. I thought if I could persuade you to give yourself up and stand trial. I've lived with half a man for 12 years. I hate myself and him. I've played the part of a loving wife when I can't bear the touch of his hands. Oh, Cole, you're the only happiness I have here. My ranch isn't for sale. You don't have enough money to buy me out, or enough men to drive me out. Why, you listen to me. Don't force me to fight, because you won't like my way of fighting. <laughs> The 1956 comedy The Tea House of the August Moon was a vehicle for Marlon Brando, but it also displayed Glenn Ford's new flair for comedy. I ask you what happened, Captain. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, well, this machine, this, this, you know, the payroll computation machine, it made a mistake, it seems, of a quarter of a million dollars in the payroll. And uh, unfortunately, the men were paid before the mistake was discovered. Robbery, ladies, kind of gentlemen, please to introduce myself. Sakini by name, interpreter by profession. Brando played the Okinawan translator Sakini, who manipulates Army Officer Ford into helping establish a tea house on the island. His life perfume. Sakini, you are a civilian employee in the pay of the United States Army, and should dress accordingly. Yeah. Pull your socks up. Very sorry, boss. Sucks up. Anything more, boss? That'll be all. Is that as fast as you can walk? No, no, boss. But to walk any faster, sucks fall down. <laughs> hey. Where are you going, boss? I'm about to form the cooperative brewing company of Tobiki. Am I 
going blind? Or are we flying from the mast, a pair of something that no one on this ship has seen for 31 months? Don't Go Near the Water was another military comedy, though this time the Navy was the satirical target. Gia Scala, Earl Holloman, Anne Francis, and Fred Clark were on hand to share in the zany antics. The most serious thing in my entire naval command has happened. What is it, Commander? An enlisted man is dating an officer. Oh, ma'am. Stop calling me, ma'am. This is war? Is a long train. In the western 310 to Yuma, Ford found himself on the other side of the law as a crafty outlaw being brought to justice by Van Heflin. Think you'll ever get back to Bisbee? Oh, well, it don't look like it. I ain't complaining. I got something to remember. Don't move. It's the marshal, Wade. He's got a shotgun on you. More westerns followed for the actor in 1958 as he appeared in genre films like The Sheep Man and Cowboy. One of the reasons behind the actor's continual returns to the genre might be the fact that he was an accomplished writer in real life. In fact, Ford was an all-around animal lover, no matter what kind of critter he was handling. Frank Capra cast Ford in his comedy Pocket Full of Miracles, a remake of the 1933 Lady for a Day. Betty Davis, Hope Lang, and Arthur O'Connell co-starred in this delightful tale. Starring Glenn Ford. Junior starter Brannigan. Stop the weasel. Sure, boss. Betty Davis. I beg your pardon. Oh, my gracious stars. Hope Lang. Arthur O'Connell. And the most delightful mob that ever muscled its way into your heart. It's a big motion picture filled with the little things that turn the screen hilariously and miraculously wonderful. Frank Capra's Pocket Full of Miracles. Meet the barons of Broadway and their babes as they take over the town lock, stock, and barrels of laughter in the funniest plot that ever copped your heart. Glenn Ford. Well, well, I've been waiting two years for one like that. Betty Davis. A nickel! Thank you, Mr. Rockefeller! Hope Lang. Arthur O'Connell. It's a wild and wonderful miracle picture that delights up the screen. Frank Capra's Pocket Full of Miracles. Ford found himself heading an all-star cast in Vincent Minnelli's World War II drama, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Lee J. Cobb, Carl Bone, Paul Lucas, Paul Henry and Yvette Mimieu were just some of the stars lending their talents to the MGM production. Though the film did not do as well as the studio hoped, Ford put in a good performance as a playboy whose eyes are open to the horrors of the Nazi regime. Advance to the Rear was a Civil War comedy that teamed Ford with Stella Stevens and Melvin Douglas. Helping to lead a group of misfit soldiers, the actor found himself in all kinds of crazy situations. You don't know anything about me. Well, I know you're a spy. Della Stevens is the spy. Melvin Douglas is the knuckle-headed commander. I see you. <laughs> Keith! <laughs> don't cruise the merchandise. Joan Blondell as Easy Jenny. Jim Backus, the general. Attack, attack! The charge of the ski brigade. Holy mackerel, there's no snow. The craziest onslaught in the history of laughter. Sing the name. Ford lent his talents to the all-star 1966 film Is Paris Burning, which detailed the city's 1944 liberation from the Nazis. Ford was cast as General Omar Bradley and is seen here rehearsing a dramatic moment in the film. You win. The decision has been made to go into Paris, and the three of us hold the responsibility for that decision. I, because I'm giving the order. You, General Leclerc, because you are going to execute it. And you, Major Galois, because you brought us the information that led us to that decision. Thank you. The Money Trap was an attempt to recapture the flavor of the classic film noirs from the 40s. 
Ford played a corrupt cop married to the beautiful Elkie Summer. Former co-star Rita Hayworth returned portraying Ford's ex-lover with whom he resumes an affair. I'm a little nervous, that's all. Since Kenny got killed. I think somebody's gonna to try to kill you, right? Ricardo Montalban helped round out the cast as Ford's partner on the force. She might have talked. No, she didn't talk. You want to gamble on a drunken tramp? Who? So you were kids together. People change. They grow up and you can't trust them. Well, take... Take me, for instance. There was a time all I wanted to be was a good cop. Ford returned to a Civil War setting for the 1967 picture, A Time for Killing. George Hamilton was on hand as the Confederate captain, causing trouble for Ford's Union troops. I hate no man. Well, there's a little time yet. The war is nearly over. This war will never be over. The actor joined an all-star cast for the war drama Midway, filmed in the new process of Sensora. With plenty of combat scenes, the picture dramatically recreated the most decisive naval battle of World War II. So real you can feel it in Sensora. Another epic cast was assembled to bring the world's most popular comic book character to the silver screen. In Superman, the movie, Ford's everyman persona was perfect for the role of Pa Kent, the hero's adopted father. Because of the wisdom and compassion of Jor-El, because he knew the human race had the capacity for goodness, he sent us his only son. His name is Kal-El. He will call himself Clark Kent. But the world will know him as Superman. Glenn Ford continued working in films throughout the 80s and into the early 90s. His ability to perfectly portray normal men in abnormal situations always made him an appealing choice for producers and directors. And he was equally at home playing comedy or drama, no matter what the setting. Hollywood will always remember Glenn Ford.